we want to magnify your holy name and we exalt thee. We praise you for your faithfulness and your love and kindness. We ask for your might and your power to be demonstrated in our midst tonight. And the realities of your glory designed for our lives. We see you mildly in our midst unleashing all our heart desires and our expectations. And tonight, let your word be taught by the Spirit. That is what you are sent to bring become great light. Let it empower us. Let it cause the grace that you have designed for our life for this year, that we might walk in your righteous judgments. Let the same be unleashed. Bless everyone tonight with this word. In the mighty name of Jesus. This worship shall become a compass in our life throughout this year in the name of Jesus. This undiluted word of God, this completeness of God's word, surely is renewing minds and is transforming lives in the name of Jesus. Shall we now sit down before his throne of grace? Blessed be his name. Our theme tonight is why sometimes the delay of God's righteous judgments why is sometimes the delay of God's righteous judgments? And tonight I want to answer the question in the minds and in the hearts of many modern day believers in Christ. And this question is why is it that God does not bring quick or instant justice to some that live contrary to his ways and precepts in this life? Why is it that God does not bring quick or instant justice to some that live contrary to his ways, God's ways, and his precepts in life. I know that's a question most of times bothers the mind of many born again believers. And also this question, why also does God sometimes delay doing good or bringing his structural judgments to bear in the life of the Christian? Why? Why? And what makes this thoughts worse in our minds is that we even sometimes we see the wicked and the sinner blossoming in the midst of their wickedness. In the midst of their sinful act, we see them blossoming and making a big time in life. Or big time on earth. Whilst many who are God's children are walking in frustration and in defeat. And this misconception, that's what I'll call it, or mis. Understanding in many Christians' minds is because they have not come to understand or we have not come to always also appreciate the extent of this nature of God that depicts his long suffering, his love and kindness, his mercies and forgiveness. I'm saying why we have this misconception in our heart and we ask ourselves, why is it God Allowing these wicked ones and these sinful people prospering was the righteous ones sometimes can't find their bearing in life. I said this is a misconception or it's a misunderstanding that we have in our hearts. Because we have not come to understand and to as well appreciate the extent of the nature of God which depicts his long suffering. We all know that God is long suffering. We know that God is loving. His love and kindness is beyond our human comprehension. We all know about his mercy and his forgiveness. Certain times, certain people live such wicked lives. They are so selfish, very wayward, non compliant, rebellious, insubordinate, and disobedient. And they live these lives that we perceive that God's judgment upon them is inevitable or unavoidable. Yet God in his infinite wisdom and his love and kindness chooses to let go these faults of these individuals and give them another opportunity for repentance so he could forgive and turn their lives around. Why this delay of God's righteous judgment certain times when we think the judgment should be ultimate and should come fast. This accounts for the reason why we see the wicked and the rebellious individuals still live and doing well despite the atrocities 
that they commit continually. Since God is a righteous judge, he alone knows why he let go of these people off his hook. He is the only one because he is the righteous judge. We don't know why he let people go off this hook. With these atrocities and wicked acts, he still allows them to go on. But when God allows it, it does not suggest that he condones with their wickedness of their sin. You see many armed robbers going to kill people, they destroy lives, and that is happening to them. People have cursed them and they are still living. It is just God's tender mercies that sometimes prevail in certain situations. So he could give these wicked individuals or sinful people such a new start in life. That's the heart of God. He wants to give everybody a start of life. This is the reason why the Bible in Fertical states that it is of the lost mercies that we are not consumed. And that they are not consumed because his compassion fails not. He said they are new every morning and great is his, is his faithfulness. It's because of the greatness of his faithfulness that he allowed, he judged, he allowed the delay sometimes of his righteous judgment upon man. When I was thinking about this thing, the Lord just flashed in my heart with regards to Apostle Paul. Let's take him as a steady case. For instance, if God had not let him off the hook, we all know how Paul was. He was called Saul. Wicked to the church. It's that his wickedness that even Stephen was slain. He took the clothes of the people so that they could be free and they could throw stones to kill Stephen. But God let him off the hook. He went and he received documents from the then government so he could go from one place to the other persecuting the church. It was in one of his wicked acts or his ways that God stopped him in the tr the Lord stopped him in his track. So the reason why God delays his church judgment, we are using Apostle Paul as a case study. If God had not left him off the hook initially, when he went about persecuting the church of Jesus Christ, we wouldn't have a, such a dynamic apostle of God who availed himself to be used of the Lord as conduit for an in-depth revelation truths concerning the new creation or the born again believer in Christ. It is the Pauline epistles, most of us should be aware by now, that reveals in detail the true nature, the life and the status and the privileged position of God's new creation in Christ now called the Christian. It is through the Pauline epistles, the writings of Paul, that gives us the details of the true nature of the born again believer. That gives us the details of the true life of the born again believer. It is true the Pauline epistles that gives us the de details of the status and the privileged positions that we have in Christ. No wonder the Bible records that God does not delight in the death of the wicked. Are you aware? That God does not delight in the death of the wicked. Why? Because some of these ones are instruments of his mercies brought in at the last moment to become effective tools in God's hands for his redemptive work on, on, on earth. That's why God, sometimes God had to delay his judgment, his righteous judgment upon some wicked individuals. Praise the Lord. As a cruel case of his love always towards men. And I think we don't need to go in a further to ascertain or establish this basic truth. But just look back at our own lives before we knew Christ. Some of us did nothing good to talk home about as far as our life then was concerned. However, during our wicked and wayward life, God still looked beyond our faults and he saw our need and went ahead and saved us and has now made us heirs of his eternal kingdom and empowers us to enjoy the kingdom benefit. Can you imagine if those days what I was doing, God was to allow his righteous judgment to fall upon me right at the time that it needs to fall upon me. Will you have me standing here tonight preaching? That's the reason why God sometimes delays his righteous judgments on the wicked. And God wants us to know. That does not mean God condones with their wicked acts. 
But there are something, some of them, God in his infinite wisdom knows that they are instruments of his mercies. That at the long run, he will use them to accomplish the purpose on this earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If God had killed some of us before our time or made us useless of none effect, we wouldn't have gone ahead to get married and have children. To the extent that we look at our babies also and we look at them and we get so delighted. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the chapter 1, the verses 26 to 20, the Bible says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That before we were called, not many of us were mighty, not many of us were wise. According to the flesh. But God chose this as, as foolish things of the world to confine the wise. And that God has chosen the weak things of this world to confine the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world. And things which are despised have God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to not things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's the reason why that no one can glory in his presence. You see, Paul said because of the intensity of the revelation that was made known to him, there was a thorn that was in his flesh. People are trying to describe the thorn in diverse ways. I don't want to worry myself to describe. The Bible said there was a thorn in his flesh and he prayed several that God should take him away and God refused to take it away. And God said, is that weakness, is, 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 is this thing be made perfect? Is strength be made perfect? You, you saw how that some of the people, the church those then were saying, look, when the man is standing before you, he's just nothing by his letters are so heavy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God sometimes lets Man off his hook of instant justice and judgment. He does this so no one can say it is his or her goodness or uprightness outside of him that has merited us this privilege position in Christ. But all that we are now and we can do is of him and not of our own selves. This is what he meant when he said in the verse 29 that, that so no man should be able to glory in his sight. Verse 29 of First Corinthians chapter 1. That God said he has done that no man can glory. Because none of us were perfect when he chose us. So if we want to point at accusing figures at the sinner. And complain why God has been merciful to them. And not judge them outrightly. Though they live wicked lives. And we don't need, we don't need to go far to get the answer. Since we can get one in the book of Ezekiel. Can we look at the book of Ezekiel 33? Look at what God told the people. At that time when they were committing crimes and atrocities and walking outside of his counsel and his precepts. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. According to Prophet Ezekiel, the, he said, the Lord told him to tell. He said, say unto them, as I live, as sure as I live, the Lord God, said the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn from his way and leave. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways for why will you die, O house of Israel? They were doing so much things that God didn't want. And God have told, already told them about the consequences of living wayward life, of living life outside of his precepts. And the sin was becoming so much which warranted the Instant justice of God. But God, because of his infinite mercies and love, told Ezekiel to tell the people that as long as he lives, he has no pleasure in their death. No matter how wicked they are, because they have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will turn from his way and live. Turn ye, he said, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? So God said he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Which means when a wicked or a sinner dies, it does not profit God in any way. It doesn't profit in any way. But when a sinner or a wicked person repents, it does profit God. That's why the Bible says when one soul is won to a kingdom of God, the whole angels in heaven rejoice. So to those of us who are thinking, oh, why, why has God left this part of the hook? Look at them. They are this way. If you are not careful, you begin to give up God and you also walk their way. Because the psalmist Asap nearly had the same challenge. Praise the Lord.
But the day God's wickedness, God's mercy brings the wicked out of their predicament, he also cautions them to live life that gives proofs of their repentance. Anytime God takes them out of their predicament, he cautions them. As wicked as they were, when God's, God grants them a heart of repentance and repent, he cautions them. That's why if you go to Micah chapter 3, the verses 7 to 8, he said, but when he saw many of the Pharisees, uh, excuse me, Matthew, Matthew 3, 7 to 8. You know how the Pharisees and Sadducees were? He said, but when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. He said, bring forth therefore fruits meant for repentance, or bring forth fruits answerable to the amendment of your life. If you say you are changing your ways, he said, let the fruits be seen. If you say you are repenting from the way you are living, then say, let your, 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 your fruits be seen. In the same way, Jesus told the woman to be stoned to death because of her immoral deed, that if no one had command, condemned her, then he would also not condemn her, but that she should go and sin no more. You found out that the same thing, the same mindset we have now is the time, is the same thing the people of the Lord had. They were doing instant justice themselves for God. And treating their Lord that when you are caught sleeping with a man or a woman who is not your married person, you say you need to be stoned. And two people had something to do, and they had a gas and they brought the woman, and they, that's why they wanted, they just wanted to pin Jesus. It's according to the Lord, it's written that when you commit this, and we caught the woman in, you see, they are in the very act. Not that somebody came to tell us, we caught her in the very act. Meanwhile, they show his issue after, and we caught them in the very, but they said they caught her in the very act. And so we are brought her. What do you think we should do to her? And Jesus said, if any among you have not sinned, he said he should be the first to cast the stone. And he went there, he was writing. That doesn't mean Jesus condoned with the sin of the woman. But what happened? Jesus, now, after he has stood up and saw there was nobody there, he asked the woman, have they condemned? He said, no. He said, then I will also not condemn, but go and sin no more. Later on, you found that it's this same woman who came to wash the legs of Jesus with that costly ointment. Jesus will not be anointed for his burial. Anytime you are supposed to be buried, you ought to be anointed. But because of time constraint, he was not anointed for his burial. But thanks be to God, this woman, the Lord used ahead of time to anoint Jesus before his burial. So that means if Jesus had not forgiven her or not given her a privilege to live again, how will she have been able to have this privilege to anoint the body Jesus before his burial? And her name has been, been mentioned. Hallelujah. So why sometimes the delay of God's righteous judgment is because he wants his mercies to prevail that he will have certain, at least if not all, some people repent so that he can use them as vessel of honor. You look to what Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. You know, when the woman came in, he poured the alabaster of oil and started using and weeping and using it and using the hair to clean the less of Jesus. And the people were sitting, some of them would say, Look, this man doesn't know this woman. <laughs> That's why he's allowed him to do all this, had to do all these things. And Jesus down turn and ask them. He said, he asked them a question, and he implying that look, uh, who receives much forgiveness is the one that lasts much. And since he stepped in that house, nobody had made any time to even give him water to wash his leg. As I then it was something that they do because of the dust. When you come, you have to wash. He said, but this woman, since he entered, have not ceased to clean his leg with the hair and with his tears and with oil. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible in 2 Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So sometimes what we do, what we do, even Christians, and God lets us off the hook, doesn't mean God is not seeing. It's just because of his mercy that he wants to prevail. Giving you another opportunity, brothers and sisters. That not all should come to repentance. As much as God is a God of love, it behooves on us to know that 
to know that if the sinner or the wicked despises God's goodness and his mercies and continue in his or her wickedness, then he or she have themselves to blame. You see, I've got God has spared you severally and allow you to do what you want to do. Just allow his goodness so that you will begin to recognize that, look, in the midst of all this thing I'm doing, God is still faithful. He's not judged me. So his love for you will cut your repentance. If you refuse it, then his, the judge, his, the judge, his judgment upon your life will be inevitable. And that's why Paul began to express in the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 4 to 9. He said, oh, despise thou the riches of his, his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but after your hardness and impertinent heart treasured up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. He said, don't you know that the goodness of the Lord and his forbearance and long suffering is to lead you to repentance. But if you persist in the hardness of your heart, you are only piling up wrath against the day of judgment and the revelation, again the day of God's revelation, God's judgment day when there is his judgment shall be revealed. Then he said, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who patient, continuous in well-doing, seek for glory and honor in immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are, contentious, that are contentious and do not obey the truth. To them that are what? Contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. He says, to them his judgment will be indignation and wrath. It will be tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. And of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So though God gives us time to repent and he leaves us off the hook, many things that we do, but look, it will catch up with you one day when you persist with that thing that you do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So even as we see the wicked persist in their wickedness, we still notice some of them, things go on well for some of them as far as material, this material world is concerned. But the Bible also makes us aware of the happenings after their death. He said, look at what happens to them. That their material possession, their corner becomes worthless. Because it does not have any bearing on their account in heaven. So if even you are living that life that is not pleasant to God and God doesn't get you off his hook, he doesn't mind you. He said, even if you are not careful, <laughs> And you die. He said, whatever you have acquired will become worthless. It will not have bearing. It will not count in heaven. If you go to Psalm 49 verse 16 to 8, he says, and not thou, am not thou afraid when one is made rich. He said, be not thou afraid. Be not thou afraid. Psalm 49 verse 16 to 18. Be, thou, be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. Don't be afraid when you see the wicked flourishing. When you see the glory of his house increasing. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. His glory shall not descend after him. It will not follow him. Though while he lived, he said, though while he was alive, he blessed his soul with the material things. He was satisfied his mouth with material things. And men will praise him. That's the verse 18. That, oh, you have done well. Oh, you are a great man. Oh, you are a good man. He said, he shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see the light. You will never see the light. So Proverbs 12, 22 says, but the wicked shall be cut off. That's what Proverbs 22 says. He said, the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressor shall be rooted or plucked out of this earth. As believers in Christ, as long as we know we are walking in God's pathways of his righteousness, then obviously we should also expect that he will judge us rightly. With the plumb of his righteousness. God has a plumb. His plumb of righteousness. When he pulls like this and says that you are in line with him, everything flows. Hallelujah. So as long as we know we are walking his pathways of righteousness, though things are not working as it should work, though we are not experiencing the glories that we ought to experience, but I want us to know that <laughs> we should expect that he will judge us rightly. At the right moment. Praise the Lord. And bring his goodness to bear in our life when the need arises. This is one of God's goals to a Christian on this earth. And that is to show forth his love and kindness. And to demonstrate his goodness towards us always. Not sometimes. So all we see 
and bless all we see the ble and bless the name of the Lord for his goodness upon us. Everyone that sees will bless the name of the Lord. This is why the Bible says in Psalm, in Proverbs 12, 28, in the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof is no death. He said, in the way of righteousness is life. In the pathway thereof is no death. So, as long as we know we are living in line with God's ways for our lives, the Bible says, in that pathway there's no death. Although you might seem it's a death, but it's not death. It says, but in his pathway is life. That's why the psalmist said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, because the Lord is with me, and his rod and his staff, it does comfort me. And he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And my cup runs over. He says, surely his goodness, surely his mercies will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in his presence. Praise the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Hebrews chapter 6, 10 also says that, For God is not unrighteous to forget our work of labor, of love. As we show in his, toward his name that we have ministered to many people. Praise the Lord. And we do minister. And this is the big one from the Isaiah, prophet Isaiah saying. As long as we are walking his righteous in his right, his right path for our life. In Isaiah 61 verse 3 says. He will appoint unto us the, them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. He will appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So although you think things are not working. God is not showing forth his righteous. He said by a day will come he will appoint unto us that morning Zion, to give unto us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we might be called the trees of righteousness, the plant of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You see why God wants to demonstrate his righteous judgments towards us always? It is because of the fallen state of man and the world now being full of darkness. So God wants to Change the situation in our life on this earth for our good. That's why he's always seeking to have his righteous judgment unveiled upon our life. In order for our life in Christ on earth to conform to our status declared in his kingdom. There's a kind of status God has brought you into in his kingdom. And that status can only be brought into bear when God's righteous judgment begins to be unveiled upon your life. Hallelujah. So God wants to change the, the situation in our life on this earth for our good. So that our life in Christ on earth can conform to our status declared in his kingdom. This is why he promised to judge the Christian with his righteous judgment by bringing us beauty in the place of ashes of this world. Are you, does your life look so, so, so rejected and looking ugly? God said he'll bring beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you full of heaviness and mourning? You are grieving or sorrowing? which is associated with the fallen standard of this lost world, God said he'll bring the oil of joy, praise the Lord, to gladden your hearts. And that spirit of heaviness, he said he's replacing them with a garment of praise. Hallelujah. The spirit of heaviness that is always overwhelming this end times world, God said he will replace it with what? With a garment of praise. That means your heart will always be full of praise. That's part of the situation. That's one of the righteous judgments of God for us as Christians. And he's compassing us about with all this goodness of his. So that we might be called trees of righteousness. That is the plant of his own hand. So his name might be glorified on this earth in these last days. Hallelujah. Amen. However, my key point tonight is centered on three main areas in the life of the believer that can also cause the delay of God's righteous judgment in our lives and undertakings. We are talking about how, why, the delay of God's righteous judgment and we delve deep into a little bit into the wicked and the sinner. And even those that are in the house of God and are still living life that has not worth emulating. Life that are not in line with his word. God's mercy still prevails and he allows you. Yeah, but it's for a season. Hallelujah. But however, I said there are three areas in the life of the believer Assuming you are living the way God wants you to live. You are living in accordance with his precepts. You are living in his line. You are, you are living as a child of sanctity. However, there are three main areas in, the life, in your life that can also cause the delay of God's righteous judgment. 
and in our undertakings. And I think it is good we know and recognize these areas so we can work around them in order to receive all that God, here, God has here for us in this year 2024. The number one area is that God admonishes us in the book of Micah. He encourages us that we should arise and depart. He said, arise, depart, for this is your, your rest. Micah chapter 2. The verses 10 to 11. Can you put it on the, on the distance for me? Micah chapter 2, the verses 10 to 11. He said, arise, depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted and will destroy you with a sore destruction. He said, arise, ye, and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted. Where you are is polluted. It shall destroy you with even a sore destruction. The verse 11. It says, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of these people. <laughs> it says, if a man walking in the spirit and falsely do lie, say, I will prophesy unto thee of wine. That means he's a man of the spirit, but he goes into the flesh. And he said, I will prophesy unto you wine and strong drink. He said, he shall even be the prophet of these people. It's all mean that when you get stagnant in your quest for the knowledge of the things of the spirit or the word of God, what happens is that you become a prey to the hands of the weak one. There's a state many of us have found ourselves in which is not our resting place. Many of us have come to know the Lord and the state we have been in is not the resting place. But we have decided to pitch our tent there thinking we have arrived. We know it all. Forgetting that the Bible says we ought to always progress in every endeavor we undertake. As long as Christ second coming tarries. So as long as Christ second coming tarries, we need to experience progress in every endeavor of our life. Our, both our spiritual, our material, financial, our marriage life. In every area of our life on this earth, we need to progress. So there's no need for, there's that need so there is the need for constant improvements in our spiritual life on earth and our spiritual work with the Lord till we make it as God wants us to make it here with his power at work in us. We need to. So he says, arise. Where you think you have arrived, he says, that's not the end of it. You've not arrived yet. Praise the Lord. You, you know, when you think you have arrived, sometimes even when they do mention something or they are reading a scripture, oh, I know it. You don't even give it a thought. And most probably, that scripture, you have not known it to the fullest. I remember Kenneth Higgin, E.W. Higgin, in, past, in, in, in Blessed bless Man, who's gone to glory. One time, Jesus appeared to him, and, and then Jesus was telling him something. He said, no, he can't find it. He's not there in scriptures. And the thing was in the New Testament. And he told Jesus he has read the New Testament 5,000 5, 5, times. And Jesus said, oh, really? Okay, I, I'm going to give you two. He said, no, Jesus, give me one. Jesus, I'll give you two examples. And when Jesus gave it, he gets a shatter. <laughs> so you don't know it yet. No wonder the Bible says, if any man think he know of anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. First Corinthians 8, 2. So if you think you know, he said you don't know anything that you think you know. First Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 8, 2. And First Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore, let him that think he stands to take he lest he falls. If you think you are standing, take he. So in whichever state that we find ourselves in the realm of the spirit, there is an improvement. That's what the Bible says. Say, arise, see, depart, for this is not your rest. The place that you are now is polluted and it will destroy you with a sore distraction. It will puff you up. You saw how something, something came to a place that he thought he was all in all. He thought he could do anything and go out with, go, 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 go out, go, 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 come out with, from, with, uh, out of it. And he sat down and you know your secret and he revealed his secret. Forgetting that what he did was a target against his life. And several he lied but the last time he said the right thing. And now the people did what they ought to do. And when he got up, he told he was, Bible said, an half of the time, like Jesse has been doing, he got up and said something, the Philistines are on you. Rah! You know, he would do that and all the ropes around his hands would become like flags and they tear. But this time around, he never told. And they got angry and they broke his eyes. He said, <laughs> You are lucky if you have your eyes. So we take the eyes. And that's how you do You see whether you can even see us, let alone to hit us. So they said, we've brought you to your, your end. And that's what they did. 
So the only thing that he could do was, Bible says he killed more in his death than when he was alive. He said, arise. We can arrive until Christ comes. Every one of us, no matter where you are, that's what has brought most of us not to experience the righteous judgment of God. That's what is delaying most of the righteous judgment of God until we have arrived. That's the problem. I don't want to take much of our time. Let's look at the number two area we need to work at as Christians. The Bible says, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he will come in his glory. Psalm 102, the verses 16 and to 17. Can you put it there for me? Psalm 102, the verse 16, that's the verse, 102, the verse 16, that's the verse 16, I read the verse 17. He said, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall come in his glory. So when the Lord shall build up Zion. So the glory of the Lord only gets unleashed when you are built. There are certain realms of God's glory that we can't touch until we are built to meet that realm. Until we come to a place of understanding where the light that we have permeates through to that realm. Put the verse 17 down for me. He will regard the prayer of the life, the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Have you seen that? You see, when you come up to that place, when you are built up, your prayer becomes effective. When you are built up, your prayer becomes what? Effective. You know, the reason why most of us are praying the prayer we pray, and some of the prayer people pray look babies, you know, is because we have not, we, 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 we have not allowed the Lord to build us. God says the only time a certain kind of his, his glory shall appear before you. Right now you are enjoying to the, some, the extent some glories of God by virtue of the way you have been built to a certain degree of a light or understanding of the word of God. That's the glory you are enjoying. But that is not your place. You need to move ahead. God, he says, we move from glory, from grace to grace, from glory to glory. There's a higher dimension always of God's glory that are set to unleash upon your life and until you get built up. So there's a spiritual building process in our life with regards to every glory that God wants to deposit in our life. There's a spiritual building process in our lives with regards to every glory that God wants to deposit in our life. God blessed us in this way. We want a higher form of blessing and we still want to use the same technology. That lower level, you can get there. And not until we have built up to the realm, the glory which God has earmarked for our life in Christ. Christ doesn't get, those glory doesn't get unleashed on us. And what do we use to build ourselves? The Lord said, when the Lord shall build up Zion. So what we build ourselves with as Christians is the unadulterated or otherwise the complete word of God. And most of us, the way we know or where we, most of the teaching out there are very adulterated. People pick and choose and they do say what they want to say. People explain the word of God by their experiences. You look through scripture, you don't find it. But they are telling by their experience. But you can't use your experience to, to try to explain scriptures. Anytime people are here and they want to use your experience to, and I, see, I don't see in the Bible, I just cut you off my mind. I don't listen. I'm telling you, it will draw you into the senses. Your experience cannot be able to explain the word of God until it is in line with the word of God. Everyone has an experience. Yes, it might be a fact, but that's not what God calls reality. Every one of us have an experience. But your, real, your experience doesn't negate the word of God. It doesn't make it real to God. What God says is reality. What God says concerning a situation is reality. It breaks my heart, you know, people that like deliverance, deliverance, children of God, they are born again, they have accepted Jesus Christ full hearted, but because they lack the knowledge of the word of God, they claim they need deliverance. I wonder how. The only deliverance I know is delivered from the word of God. So if Jesus could, and throughout the Bible you'll find out what, that if you are born, if you are generally born of God, you have been taken out of the bowels of that. And what does it mean? You have been delivered. 
out of the powers of darkness and been brought into his marvelous life. Simply accept it, agree with God, and so shall it be in your life. But you want to see before you believe it's not going to happen. That's a problem. In the same way with generation curses, when they say that my heart hurts me, I say, my goodness. Generation what? On the first, in the first place, the, 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 the platform by which generation curses was all shared in was the platform of worship of idols. You will not even worship in idols. The second place, when God was pronouncing that he did, he said it only once. And then he even spoke concerning the blessing. Then he attacked the cursing. So it was two promises that he gave. And it is said only four times in the Bible. Three times was from Moses' lips. God said only once. The third, all the three you read the Bible is from Moses. He was trying to tell them something. Even Moses used, the fourth one he used was to plead for the children of Israel. He says, the God that causes what that be. So he said, then he chose the first one. He said, be thou merciful. And God said, I have heard. But here you are. A child of God. Because you are not seeking knowledge. And Bible says, true knowledge that just deliver, be delivered. And then, you, have, you give the devil a free day in your life and you say, no, you, are, you, you need deliverance. Then they will forever deliver you. If you want to say, oh, so why is that they are delivering, things come out. Anything can come out. You want it, it's coming out. When I didn't believe that I needed deliverance because Jesus had delivered, I said, whom the son shall selfish shall make you free. Indeed. Look, until you agree with God what he has said, you can enjoy his glories. And we don't want to agree. If Jesus, through the confession of his lordship, has set you free, what, can, what prayer can man do again to set you free? Because the prayer that we pray is to him. Is that not it? And in his name. Many are getting bound in the house of God day by day. Many. And when you don't know and you don't understand, obviously there's some dimension of God's glory that cannot be unleashed on you. That's why you'll be in that dilemma. It pains me. And don't listen. For instance, you thought they said you don't have a voice. You know, they want to see you with 10,000 crowds. When you say, this is what is happening. Oh, yes. Then the, your words, now man's word has become the law of God. How can that happen in this world? Man's words. When you are financially stable, when you are at a place of thought, when you have crowd following you, whatever you say becomes a law, not the word of God again. It's anathema. These are the last days. The word of God is the word of God. The word of God is the word of God. Any child of God who was sincerely born by the Spirit of God, he said, being born again, not of what? Incorruptible by, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible sin, which is the word of God that lives and abides forever. He said, the word of God is full of life and is eternal in nature. So where were you gripped by Satan? Why were you possessed by Satan? Yes, you might have certain, certain things that you do that is not looking like you are being, but I'm telling you, when you come to understand that you are free, you'll be free. We build ourselves with complete knowledge. Not with unadulterated word of God. With complete knowledge. No wonder Apostle Paul said to the early church and to this day church in Acts, 13, in Acts chapter 20 verse 32. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. He didn't say to the word of God. The first time I saw that skin, you found out that that's my era of concern. Every time I like that, and I, 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 so I sat before the Lord, wanting to know what the word of his grace meant. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. His grace. And he said, that is what is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among the sanctified ones or among those who are separated from the world and separated unto God. That's what sanctification means. You are set apart from the world. Now that you are in Christ, you are set apart unto God. I said, so I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. That means what Christ Jesus came to accomplish on the cross for your life as his child. Your right and privilege is in Christ. The things that have been given to you in Christ. The life that you have in Christ. And what you can do in Christ. He said, when you come to understand this, he said, it will give you an inheritance. Among the sanctified ones. 
No wonder he repeated the same thing in the book of Philemon, once the chapter one, the verse six. Philemon chapter one is all one chapter verses. He said that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging. That way, acknowledging means complete knowledge of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. He said every time you come to a place of complete understanding of all the good things that God has said concerning your life in Christ, he said your faith will be dynamic in its performance. Your faith will work. And Bible says true faith shall be. I said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He said, brethren, and now brethren. I feel he has said a lot of things. He said, now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up. And not only build you up, but he said, it's able to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It's the same thing he said in Philemon. That the communication of your, your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is you. He said, when you, you come to understand the word of his grace, what Christ has done for your life, what God did for you in Christ, what God has given to you, who you are in Christ, and what you can do. As Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He said, your faith will work effectively. And with that faith, you'll be able to lay hold on what? Eternal life. Because Bible say, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. According to the book of Timothy. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. The number three area that has delayed some of the righteous judgments upon the life of the believer can be found in the book of Isaiah 60, the verse 1 to 2. He said, arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. <laughs> he said, arise, shine. He said, now that Christ has come for die for you, he says, it's time for your rising and shine. He said, why? Because the light of God is being forth on you. Because of the accomplished work of Christ Jesus on the cross, on the cross, the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says. It said, as God's beloved ones, we are asked to arise to this call in every area of our lives. It said, there are certain privileges, there are certain things that God did for us in Christ. He said, arise. And how do you arise? You get the knowledge of it so that you can act on it. Have you gotten right, right? Arise. So you get the knowledge of what has been done for you. And then now you do what? You act on it. Is it because the light has come? The light has come here means Jesus the Savior is now residing in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So enlightenment and progress which an attribute of light is granted us in our spirit. We have been granted some enlightenment by the Holy Spirit and some great light. He said let's act on it. That's what the Bible says. If Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he shall teach you all things. And it's no lie. And it's the truth. But he's anointing. So the very things that we are running from is what is pushing us to our dead end. The men who use us. And men who do what they want to do with our lives. Men who deceive us. Men who put us. Now it's difficult to believe, to, to be able to determine who, who actually is called of God or who is not called of God. That's how the, stem, the, the, the world has become now. But obviously, it's because there are some who are called. That's why there are also people who are counterfeit. It's difficult now. The way the world is going. And it's difficult to believe what he said. You see, if actually you are a student of the word of God and you go and they are propounding those theories, some of them, you know that, no, 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 nobody will tell you. It's not about reading the Bible, saying surfacely. How the coordinating you will know. And the things they do, some of them, you don't find it in scripture. When you tell, they'll tell it's, it's mystery. What is a mystery? 
He said, the mystery that was hidden in time past has now been revealed. Christ in you, the hope of, I don't know, when you read, you don't believe it. My goodness. That's what I brought, the delay of many of God's structural judgment in our life. We don't want to arise and shine. Meanwhile, God says, the light, his light has come. And his glory is risen upon your life. That means he has given you power to be able to effect the change you want by his spirit that's at work in you. Now you go to places, people are operating just like uh, the juju man. Just like the babalao. Just like, and Christians can't discern. Sometimes some of the things they even put on the altar when you see it should scare you. Some of the things that even they hang here when you see it should scare you. Some of the things they wear even so that when you look at it critically it will scare you. And so if you don't want to arise then you give the devil a free day and now you say God he actually has not judged down well with me thinking that you always have to depend on the message of men to receive, you are not going to get it. I will say, by the answer of fresh, shall no man prevail. Most of the false teachers and false prophets that have come are arising now in this life is, is the creation of the church, is the creation of the body of Christ, because we don't want to learn. We have created them, I'm telling you. Don't see what God said? He said that people, if a man prophesied them, he said this prophet shall be their prophet. Micah 10, Micah 2, the 10, the verse 11. Micah chapter 2, the verse 11. Look at what he said. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We therefore have the power or what it takes to forge forward in life, Jen. We have the power to forge forward. And as well as power to resist any resistant force of the enemy. Any resistant force on this earth that will want to impede our way of progress in life. You see, arise, shine, for the light is come. God will be will be reminisced to tell us that we should arise when he knows he hasn't given us the strength to arise. He knows what he has deposited in your spirit. That's why he says, arise, shine. But the only way you can arise is through knowledge. Because you need some enlightenment to arise. So the prophet Isaiah is encouraging every one of us to arise because if we do so, the glories of the Lord will be seen, rubbed off on us in every way. If we refuse to depart from every given day from the place where we made it previously, if you refuse to get ourselves built up daily by God's word, and finally, if you refuse to arise and shine forth, so many destinies that's attached to us will awaken, then we place ourselves in a corner that sometimes delay the righteous judgment of God designed for our lives per each season and per each occasion. There's that righteous judgment of God designed for us per each day for each season. But sometimes why they are delayed is because we have refused to depart from where we are. We are covenant, very covenant with where we are. We refuse to get ourselves built up daily by God's word. And finally, we refuse to shine forth, we are rise and shine. I've always said it here that look, there are many people with destinies that attach to your destiny. I'm telling you, many people. Because we don't know, that's why we've left ourselves this way. If you know that, there'll be a stirring in your inner man to want to do better than you are doing, to want to know the Lord better than you know him, to want to stay the word of God better than you are staying, to want to have awesome intimacy, that mingling of your spirit with gospel that you are doing right now. If you know them, you know what I'm saying now, it looks foolishness to some people because you understand. But if I were to bring words of men, you understand. But these scripture principles, I'm telling you, we all learn from that and we have grown. And some of you have known me for years now. Have you ever seen me come to complain the way people are complaining or you see me off, off? The... No. I'm always up and doing. Why? Because I've come to believe what the Lord says concerning my life in Christ. It's become my mental image. It drives the course of my destiny. It's become my first point of preference. It's become my compass in life. Everything that I judge, I judge through what God's word says. I can't say something one, two without knowing the word of God to fit there. I've come to that place and it took consistent study. It took diligence study. God didn't just to come and impart the word in my spirit. I have to sit down. The Holy Spirit will teach you and he'll bring you. Then the word of God becomes part of you. When the word of God gets mingled with your spirit, you act the word, you will talk the word 
you will walk the word and you will live the word. And that's all God decides to do for us. Every one of us. That's why he knows you can arise. Hallelujah. He has given you what it is. If you ever want the righteous judgment of God to be unveiled at the right times, in the right seasons, please, these are the things you need to do. Leave the place where you are. Praise the Lord. Depart from that place. I know, I know you don't know nothing yet. Oh, what pastor is talking? I've known, I don't know nothing. Look, I go and I sit under some men of God. They are speaking something. I, I open my ears and I write. Before I finish what they have said, I've written far, far, far beyond. I've even got something deeper than what they are saying there. It's become my way. I swore and I told the Lord. I said, Lord, apart from your word, I'm never going to listen to any man made stories. It's your word I'm going to depend on. It has helped me till today. I made a vow one day with the Lord. I said, apart from your word, if anything's happening, I want to know it from your word. And so every time there's something happening and I want to say, if it's in the word, God will let me. Do you know sometimes it can take me year, two years to say for something somebody said that I want to see that it's in line with the word of God and as I said one day, I'll come to meet if it's there, I'll know if it's on there. It's good. God is faithful. He's faithful. So the reason why there's that delay of God's righteous judgment in the life of many believers is because we have come to a place of stagnation as far as our spiritual life is concerned. We've just stayed there. And some of us also, and then the next thing is we don't even have the complete knowledge. We just have some small, small, one by one knowledge. And even that knowledge we have is not in the spirit. It's in our mind. It's not working in our heart. It's working from the mind. The word doesn't work from the mind. It works from the heart. Because the heart is the place that incubates faith. The heart is the place that, that gives birth to faith. The heart is the place that faith is born from. So if the word is in your mind, it doesn't work. That's why you can see men of many children of God quoting words, p, 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 p. But when it comes to its expression, it becomes a problem. The word will guide you. The word will restrain you. The word will empower you. The word will forge you ahead. The word will cause you to rise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, though your beginning is small, your letter end should increase. For God knows he has given you what he takes. Hallelujah. He's not a man that he will lie. He knows if God say, arise and shine, he said, for his glory is risen upon you. And he said, the Gentiles shall come into what? Your rising. So there are people that God is waiting to come into your rising. But because you are still not rising, it's time to arise. This year is the year of God's righteous judgment. That's the banner he has given out to us as a church. Brothers and sisters, we believe it and walk by it or we disbelieve it and it will pass by. But let you let me let you know God doesn't care if even it takes one person to believe God, God will do what He wants to do in the fellow life and leave the rest. If it takes only one person to believe Him, God doesn't have a problem. God can see billions of people. If only one man will rise up, one woman will rise up, He will do what He says He wants to do for that fellow. If the rest doesn't receive, that's not His problem because His word has fulfilled its intended purpose, it will go back to Him. So the word doesn't need to fulfill its temple in the life of each and of everyone before it goes back. When he fulfills his purpose to those that believe, to those have come to a place of understanding, to those that would touch virtue by their faith, the word will return back. It doesn't go back void. It does something. It might be one person. It might be two. It might be three. It doesn't matter the number. As long as it touches a life and goes back, it's acceptable to go back. Brothers and sisters, we should not let this pass by. It's truly the year of God's structure judgments. Let us position ourselves. Hallelujah. Let us do what? Position ourselves. Let's position ourselves. Let us go this world. Let us go the things that is beclad our mind. Let us stay focused. Let us our heart be always set to want to know him more. There's nothing in this world. Many things that people say, many things that people do, they are make-believe. The reality is with God. When you are with Him, that peace of mind, that satisfaction, you don't need to have billions. You don't need to have zillions. You don't need to have all the possessions of this world. But our God will keep you alive. He will cause your heart to be full of joy. He will make your pathways bright. 
He will lead you beside the still waters. He will refresh you daily by his spirit. From that water that gushes from his presence. He will anoint you daily by his anointing. Empowering you to make progress in life. If fully, it's just a matter of time. The Lord our God. He's the most merciful, the most powerful, the all-knowing, the love of Father. He will not be angry forever. So to those of us who think, oh, we are doing it and nobody is seeing it, God is seeing it. And he's only allowed you for a time being. And he's giving you time. He said his spirit will not strive with man forever. He's giving you time. But it's time to arise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why as a child of God you will live and sometimes your face is like as if you are carrying the whole world. Why? And sometimes ha, 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 ha. it ought not to be so. Nothing should put us down. Nothing should count our spirit down. Bible says why are you so cut down oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Why are you so downcast oh my soul? Why? Why? Why are you so downcast? Many times I also get downcast. Why? It's because we lack what it takes from the word of God to refresh in our inner man by his spirit. Will ever be okay despite what is going on? The smiles will stay on. I'm telling you. The joy will stay on. The peace will stay on. Because we know our God is faithful. That despite what we are going through, he will bring us out. And he has given us many examples. He said, though you go through the waters, the waters will not overwhelm you. The fire will not consume you. And he allowed the three Hebrew children to go through the fire. Did they die? No. He's giving us physical examples to us. No matter what happens, he's there for us. They put lion, Daniel in the lion's den. He was there. Did the Daniel see him physically? No. But no lion could touch him because of the presence of God there. He does so today. What he did for Daniel, he will do more than that for you. He will do more than that for me. He will do more than that. He loves us. He wants the best for us. But we are those that have become conduits that is choked. Most of us have choked the free flow of God's blessing by the way we live, by our actions our inability to seek the word to know the fullness of his glory the way it operates to know his ways bible says god made his ways known unto moses and his acts to the children of israel we want the acts we know to we need to know his ways the acts will be unveiled automatically we have made ourselves conduits that are choked in the center so when god is flowing it doesn't come true and we say god is not doing what he said he would do he's moved every day every time of our life there's no day god has not moved you have not experienced or you are not seeing his movement because you are in the senses but when you come up hit her i'm telling you when you come up hit her he will show forth his glory he will show forth his glory he has the fantasy somebody be on your feet right now Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands. Lift up your burdens also before him. Lift up your burden before him. Lift up your hands. Lift up your burden. Lift up your burden before him, somebody, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody seek the face of the Lord. Let only one person seek right now to come to town. We'll sing. All the choir, lift up your hands before the Lord. Somebody lift up your speak to the Lord right now. Speak to the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. This is the moment God has given to us as a church that every time the word comes, we speak into it for there's an anointing of his spirit. And when we speak, the anointing will make good what we what we speak into. Bring you with words. As the word of God says, bring you with words. 
Say, though your sins will be as scattered, say, Lord, the Lord our God will turn situation around. Say, declare that, that you might be justified. Thank you. Father, we come before you as a people, as individuals. We pour out our heart unto you in honor and adoration, in praises, and in prayer, request the Lord that our heart desires and expectations will be granted us, strength will be granted us. To be able to live in these evil days, the anointing will be stirred always in our inner man. And grace will be granted to always make diligence steady in your word that we will come out with revelationaries that will channel the course of our destiny in you. For Lord, through knowledge, your word says we get delivered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that in the midst of darkness your light shines forth in our ways. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you do is good. You are God. You are the Lord. Shall we sing it together right now? your hand before the Lord and sing the song as a song of confession. Sing it as a song of confession unto him. is good everything he does is fine his righteous judgments are right his goodness is always there for us the Lord's anger will not stay forever In the little moment, he said he was angry, but with everlasting love, he said he has loved us. Because of the sacrificial lamb, this sacrificial lamb in the person of Jesus. And he has earmarked for us righteous judgments. And that every day of our life, by virtue of his righteous judgments, our life will conform with the life that he has called for us to live in Christ. Empowerments are granted us. The blessing comes on our way. The weakness is taken away. Strength is granted us. Stagnation is taken away. Progress places, replaces it. And he does so that his name might be glorified. When we think there's no hope, he makes his hopes arise. When we walk in the darkness, thinking that the darkness is going to shut our lives, there in the midst of darkness, he changed it to light. And being for for now ways that we might see clear the road out of the situation. 
Sometimes we are brought under a tunnel full of darkness. But at the end of it, he makes his light beam forth and the light keeps shining and shining. And as bright as the light comes, it comes closer to us. To beam forth so we can see our way out. None of us, as long as the Lord lives, will ever stay in darkness. None of us, as long as the Lord lives, will ever be stagnated in life. None of us, as long as the Lord lives, we take decisions that will jeopardize our life. No, we take steps that will ruin our destiny forever. None of us. Because his grace is sufficient. His power is there. His goodness is covered us. And all day long he's with us. In every place, in every given situation. For this one purpose, that we might be delivered from the hands of the wicked one. And giving us power that we can also make decrees that it shall be established unto us. That's why I know that throughout this year 2024, which he has ordained for his righteous judgment upon us. Every time we make any form of decree, it shall be established unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whenever we make any decree, it shall be established unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord surely is prepared. A mighty great way for us this year. And we are walking through. With his great light beaming forth. We are seeing clearly the pathways. And we are functioning in his stead. Expressing his glory and his wisdom. At every given moment in time. Because he is with us. His rod and his staff it does comfort us. All the days of the year 2024, no matter the trust of the enemy, the Lord is preparing a table before us in the midst of us. Our cup surely is overflowing. His goodness and his mercies. His goodness and his mercies. They will always follow us. In whatever given situation, in whatever place we find ourselves. Till he comes for us, none of us will stay oppressed nor afflicted forever. We are coming out from every form of oppression. We are coming out from every form of affliction. In the name of Jesus. We are people that have been brought into freedom. Only the Bible says we should not use our freedom for the occasion of sin. Surely we are free and free indeed. In the name of Jesus. No affliction, no powers of the devil can be able to keep anyone down anymore. His righteous judgment is more than sufficient. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing our prayer. And thank you for blessing us. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a big clap of offering. Praise the Lord.